Okay, here we go. A little bit of background. Uh, Donald Duck, Nomaho Noboshi, which obviously I'm saying wrong. It's the first game that we chose for Solar Speed League. Uh, I would probably be safe to say we all had a blast playing it. It was a fun game. It's actually, it's a really good Super Nintendo game. It's a shame it never made it out of Japan. Uh, but we chose this game. And over two weeks, we looked at the world record that's current. We kind of went through all the levels, came up with some strategy. Everybody had their hand in coming up with strategies. And we ended up with a list of leaderboard times. Nine people beat the current world record. And just kind of something to help continue to push this game to get some kind of notice. Uh, we'd like to put a little bit of a a video together of resources so people can have some idea of how to speedrun this game because there's nothing on speedrun.com right now. So here's, I'm going to be going through the run that I finished with for uh, SSL or this, this two weeks and we'll just kind of talk about what's going on during the run. I'll pause at certain times to talk about any kind of speedrun tricks that you need to pull out. I'm not really going to be breaking down the tricks and saying exactly what's the optimal way to do it. There might be a video that comes out for that later from me or someone else. Uh, but we're just going to talk about the run, just kind of show what's new, what's changed, or just what is essential to happen to get a good run. So for those of you in chat, you probably already know all this stuff, but if you have any questions, ask, because that gives me another thing to stop on and talk about. Let's go ahead and get this video started. So one other thing that I'm going to be talking about is wow. the differences between easy, Such normal, and hard. Such have to go through, <clears throat> just for Daisy's hat. Is so, it worth it in the end? Donald? First level you do are the windows. You're going to get onto this elevator, and immediately you're going to learn the hardest part of this run, which is cleaning the windows. Now you can start on floor 9 or do the two here on floor 8, and then jump up from the ladder to do 9. It's not really that big of a difference. But you're going to want to follow this general pattern. Now, I should say that this is all ran on normal mode for the game. So we start with 25 windows here. In easy mode, there'll be 22 windows. In hard mode, there's 28 windows. And you're going to see me sometimes move, sometimes not. If you walk up to a window and you hit the A button, you're going to go through the process of cleaning the windows. And it's a little bit of a drawn out process. But shout outs to Mr. Freet, who found out that if you start the cleaning process and as soon as you see I knew that felt weird too the what? window halfway clean you can press the direction and that breaks you out of the cleaning cycle and then repress a and that'll do a quick clean now in normal mode since there's 25 windows it saves roughly eight seconds if done perfectly which I mean that adds up over time and so that's the first the first level right there and we need to do two levels to get three hundred dollars to be able to afford daisy's hat saves 22 frames per window okay yeah, i'm not going to be too exact with frames and everything but just it's roughly eight seconds so it's about a third of a second per window if done properly why do you hate me ledge so we're going to be seeing the assumed humanly fastest route through here <clears throat> and so i think the fastest time that anybody in our group came up with was a 38.9 on that uh but that brings up a good point with pegs and we're going to be talking about pegs here in this video how about a good 4-1 this time so pegs are very interesting uh it's a very interesting mechanic in this game you're gonna see them in a couple places throughout the run we had some in the previous video and let me rewind a little bit Let's see if you can show this so the instant that you hit a peg uh, and you're actually on the peg if you press b you should get a fast jump off of them and it's good for building speed and it's good through getting through levels like Clock Tower, which is the next level after this. <clears throat> On this level specifically, 
you'll notice that we wait a little bit and then jump off when we're parallel with that peg again. And we do that because you see these red arrows right here on the screen. In this level, they're alternating between pointing upright and pointing down. And if they're pointing down, you just go right through them. But if they point upright, Donald will actually bump off of them at the speed that he hits them. And it'll send him sailing over the rest of the level. So the game gives you a little bit of introduction to these pegs. There's a couple other levels that we don't play in the speed run. Uh, one of them is the the dog level where you're trying to avoid making too much noise. That has some pegs in it, so that's another good introduction to pegs. But then we get to Clock Tower, and Clock Tower has a lot of pegs. <laughs> Scars, that is way too much information for what I'm trying to do for this video. <laughs> All right, so what you're going to do here is you're just going to want to sprint right off that ledge. And when you sprint right off that ledge, Donald will automatically grab this this chain over here. Okay, good. I do have the uh, the cursor here. And it's a little bit of a tight timing, but if you press B as soon as you grab that chain, you're going to get a good boost of speed. Now, I'm, I'm not there's four floors on this. I'm not going to be talking about the optimal path through it all, but I'm just going to be saying like this is the the way to get started on this level because a lot of the Donald Duck game is your execution moving through levels, and there's not there's not a lot that you can do to optimize time once you know the path. But Clock Tower, you can lose a lot of time just trying to jump in between these gears that you see on the floor down here. They uh, they eat your momentum. It's a lot of hopping to get through there, and so if you can really master going through these pegs in some kind of sequence to where you're not hitting the ground. Even if it's not the fastest, you'll save a bunch of time. Like even if you don't get your fast jumps off of them, if you can at least stay on the pegs and hop from peg to peg, uh, you'll be able to get a little bit faster time compared to just running on the ground. So run a quick jump off this peg and then immediately again off the second one. Now right there, I made a little bit of a hitch up. Keep going though. Try to stay off the gear as best you can. I'm sure that'll save them. Jump right at that pole and then try to keep your momentum and do some short jumps. There's another chain jump right there. And then <clears throat> let's go ahead and show that chain jump again. You want to be careful with this chain jump because if you continue to try to jump to the rolling gear, the rolling peg, uh, you might not be able to stop your momentum and you just fly off and fall back down to floor one. So I kind of slow down there a little too much, but still. So you notice I stopped on that rolling peg when I jumped onto it, but I was facing the other way. And I'm facing the opposite direction of where I'm trying to go because the game is just coded to start that peg sooner rolling to the left. So if you jump on it facing the direction you want to go, you'll have to swing a little bit before it actually starts moving. If you're facing the other way, it'll just start moving. So that saves a little bit of time. Oh my gosh. So that one kind of caught me off guard right there because I uh, sometimes you can get the momentum to get onto that ledge and then jump to the peg right here and swing from that peg onto the, uh, the platform. But that's a little bit of a, a hard jump to hit. So usually you hit this section right here and then have to jump up and then jump across those spikes to that peg. I was not expecting to land up here. Oh my god. And it gosh. just kind of scared me. So that's why I had that small jump there. <clears throat> Ladders. Ladders are a giant pain. And they're a pain because as soon as you press an up input, you'll grab onto the ladder. So when you try to go up ladders fast, it's easy to hit B up and just lose all your momentum because you jump and then grab real quick. Excuse me. So you want to jump and allow yourself to get enough of that jump before you grab again <clears throat> so that you can Oh my gosh. quickly get up this ladder. All right, so I'm going to grab the second peg and then a quick jump over there. You want to hold back on momentum to avoid these spikes down here. 
can make that jump in just one bound. I was trying to cut the jump short there to get a good jump up the ladder, but I just kind of fell short. And then one more backwards swing here. So yeah, there's an optimal path through here. Uh, Scars has a task through here. And I know Mr. Freed has videos of him going through here at a great pace, hitting all the momentum jumps or whatnot. Okay. Now we start getting into the boss levels. <laughs> so, uh, with the story of the game, this is the first level where we really get into enemies. And when you have a lot going on in the game, there is a bunch of lag that's generated. And so, one difference that you're going to see between easy to normal and hard is that you're going to have more lag in normal and hard because there's more enemies on the screen. So here I have the enemy that I've just jumped off of. I've got this enemy, although he's not really moving, so I don't know if he actually generates lag. And we're going to see other enemies in this level. Uh, there's a couple ways to reduce lag as you go. One, you can get Donald off screen, which we're going to see here. All right, jump off screen. Another is that when you jump, you do as short a hop as possible. <clears throat> because a lot of lag gets generated on Donald's jumps while he's moving through the air. So you'll see the game slow down a little bit like there. Relatively, I mean, it's a short level. There's just a lot of places where you can get hit, and if you jump too high, you're gonna create a bunch Village of lag. Boss. Now the village boss, it's RNG. I think out of the two weeks that we've had, no one really understood how to manipulate the village boss. I had two or three baits from him here to where I couldn't hit him. But as long as you do the dive down attack, so that's another thing I should mention. Uh, for the most part, if you head dive with Donald, as in you hold down while you're in the air, you'll do more damage and kill bosses faster than if you were to just jump onto them like a butt attack. So village boss should take five hits and you'll beat him that way. Uh, that's another big difference between easy, normal, and hard. You're going to have less or more hits on bosses that you have to do to beat them. Ah, so Scars wants to know why he spawns so fast. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so another little <clears throat> part of that boss. We can talk about that. That's fine. While Donald is standing on a barrel like that, <clears throat> I don't know if it's because the village boss is trying to spawn on that same barrel or if there's something else in the code, but uh, if you're standing on that barrel he won't spawn. It'll take him longer to spawn. And so what you'll see is either people standing on a ledge or standing just on the very edge of the barrel to where it doesn't affect him popping out. Uh, so you, you don't want to stand... Like, this is the end of the fight right here, so it doesn't matter. But you don't want to stand this far onto a barrel during the fight because he's not going to pop out quickly and you're just slowing the fight down yourself. All right, snow level. What you want to utilize here are the downward slopes for the best speed you can get. We're going to go ahead and go across the top here. And then we're going to hop over this spring because you get to this this like fast ramp speed quickly. Now, that was a pretty bad oh, showing. <laughs> That was a pretty bad showing of the uh, the rooftops, but there's a couple ways you can handle them. <laughs> so these rooftops eat momentum. And if you land in the center and start running, you shouldn't really lose too much. If you land to the left of center of a rooftop, it really starts to eat your momentum, and then you have to be careful how you jump. Uh, I think... 
I mean, at least the way I like to do it is these short hops. And these first two looked okay. Like that. But I landed a little too far to the left here. And it ate my momentum and messed this jump up. You can quick hop over those. There's a, a faster strat you can do that involves... And I can't really tell you the pixel because I, I think it's pixel perfect. But as long as you run down here, there's a pixel that you can jump off of that you'll have the, like the fast speed, like you would be going down a ramp or jumping off a peg really, really fast. You can jump off that pixel and that'll send you flying forward and doing that two frame window. Okay, yeah, forget that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't like to do it. I like to just try to hop across and not mess something up too much. Uh, but you can do that, and it does save time, for sure. You can hop off the edge of this and get some fast speed, and then you'll know how to adjust as you practice that moving forward. But what is really, really important here, and we've a couple of us have learned this the hard way, you want to get ramp speed off of this right here, because this snowman will block you. And if he blocks you, you're not going to be able to do anything, really. You need the speed to run up the hill coming forward so you need that ramp speed there five seconds behind Four. Yeah, you don't keep the, the slope speed of the jump so i'm just saying that jump goal. starts with a, a quick jump compared to normal speed all right the mountain run this uh when you're getting used to it this jump right here is a little bit of a beast. It's a little scary, but you want to have your full momentum sprint, and you want to jump when Donald's about right here. It, it's a little surprising, but Donald doesn't fall off the edge when he's like his toes are stuck right here. You're going to see that I jump. Well, that's going to be really hard to get, isn't it? So my foot was about out here when I jumped, and that's fine. You have a little bit of a wiggle room to jump, and you need that extra distance to make that right here. Uh, if you fall down, there's a couple ways to save it. You'll, you could land on a little branch and come back up, uh, or there's also some mechanic in this level. If you continue down to the right, uh, there'll be this wind that blows you up to the top left of the level, and then you'll have to kind of rework your way down but uh sometimes you just miss that jump fall and die and then your runs over and you start over in any case continue up on this cork this red one will take you to the top and then that leaf right there is the leaf that activates the remainder of the red corks in the level <clears throat> so there are other ways to get to the final cork that takes you to the boss but it's not activated until you hit that leaf right there. So you need to hit that leaf to even just progress through the level. So this takes us off screen, but we're still kind of on the same screen. It just starts us there. You get a big jump here over to this cork. And then there's a couple different ways that you can handle this. Uh, you can jump over this bird, and then when you come up to the top, you can just get a big jump and jump to the left to the final cork. Uh, you'll take damage on the bird or you can kill it, the second bird that we're about to see, or you can kill it and then do the big jump. Or you can just do a small jump to a leaf and then through the cork. Uh, I forget what I actually did in this run. Okay, yeah. So you can either take damage on that bird or just do a bigger jump over the bird. Uh, but before this cork reaches the top right here, you can get enough momentum and jump over to this ledge over here. Uh, but if you take too long, when that cork reaches the top, it'll bounce Donald up in the air a little bit. And then you'll have to re-get momentum because him kind of like self-hopping causes you to lose momentum. So I took the damage off that first bird and that allowed me to pass through the second bird without taking damage. Doesn't matter either way, you're gonna take damage at least one time. We we'll just do it that way. Yeah, I know. Alright, so this boss. This boss has ended runs, and you need to be a little careful because you don't want to get too greedy on this boss. 
you have a lot of time, but if you start to hit him too early, then he's going to start going back towards his hammer. And I don't think we really know what forces him to drop the hammer versus continue to slam the ground with the hammer. Uh, because there have been times when he's dropped it immediately again when he picks it up, and sometimes it just takes him a really, really long time to drop it. <clears throat> so you want to kill him before he picks up his hammer again. And there's been a couple of different strats that people use. Uh, some people do full jumps off of him, land, bend down with Donald, and then full jump again and then hit him. Excuse me. What, I, uh, what I'm what i using here and a couple other people use is I'm going to do a full jump off of him. And when I land, Donald's going to blink and open his eyes. And then I'm going to wait an instant and then full jump again and continue the process. Blink. 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 And that's the kind of cycle you want to go through. And it's that easy. Uh, <clears throat> for the most part, if you jump too soon, the head dive will miss, you'll take damage, and then you'll just do a normal butt attack on him. And well, uh, you'll just have to do more damage well, to finish the that. fight. Him jumping up and down might be like... If you do that twice in the fight, then you're, you're being really, really risky, and you're super risking him picking up that hammer again so it's okay if you mess up once if you mess up twice on that you're kind of risking the run like all right that, you got a bit of time so we're getting ramp speed off these don't jump over these stones it's just faster to keep your speed right here and make a good jump on that seesaw i missed the short jump for the first jump onto the seesaw all right so you do these Little sections. I'm going to say right here, this ledge, <clears throat> you don't need momentum to get over that. You can just kind of, when you come up. So I jumped immediately as soon as I hit here, just because you don't need the momentum to get up there. Go through this secret passage and then short jump to not hit any ledges there. You don't have to do anything for those mirrors. You just stand on them and they automatically activate. Another jump here. You want to hit left. You just want to tap it a little bit. You don't want to hold it too much because then you won't be able to come back right enough. So just tap it a little bit and then hold right when you get to the top. All right. So that jump right there is actually pretty hard. <clears throat> uh, this is another level that you can generate some lag, but mainly just because of that enemy right there. So if you jump too high... You're going to have a lot of lag as you come down to hit that seesaw. You can do a short jump and just hit him, and then all the lag will go away anyway, and then you just land on the seesaw. Or the jump that I just did right there, you can just avoid all of that lag. But it's a little tight. As you're going up, go up, hold left, and you should be able to land on that seesaw. Uh, I just missed it on that run. Now this guy. Okay, so this is much more RNG that we have to worry about. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you can just stand underneath this guy. A lot of people like to take damage first. I like to kind of move him to a different spot. I just feel like his starting spot when you walk into him and just duck to not take any damage is kind of bad on RNG, so I move him a little bit. The general rule of thumb for this fight is that if you don't move these icicles or stalagmites, tights, whatever, they spawn quicker if you're not moving. Uh, because the, the cycle goes, one's going to form over Donald and it'll attack Donald. So you try to move the ghost over to it. And then another one's going to form up and over Donald. And you're trying to move the ghost over to it. And then there's going to be a bunch on the ceiling. And so it's kind of like, all right, can I move the ghost to it and not take damage and get hit by one myself? Uh, we kind of remove all of that by just ducking under the ghost here. Issue is, every time you try to move, you're going to take damage. Unless the ghost is damaged at that point, then you can kind of get out of the way. But you don't really want to move anyway, because that's, like I said, if you're moving, 
they take longer to form. So you can start this fight any way you want to. Uh, you can either walk right into it and then duck and just let RNG take over. What I like to do here is I'm going to move him over there. I saw that form and I'm just ducking. So we got two hits on him. Uh, if you, I think if you start the fight without moving, there will be two singles that come down and then the group. Uh, I only got one single and then the group to come down. And I think that's just because I was moving and the first one took a little too long to spawn. I'm not sure. I don't really understand that part of the fight. But he gets hit there. That's his third hit. Fourth hit. Fifth. Sixth. So that right there was really, really amazing RNG, the way that they just kind of lined up like that. Seven. And eight. That's about the best you can really hope for. Uh, that's really good RNG. That saves some time. And I think I got a glide on... No. Oh, I had some bad jumps in level. Not like it did me any good. In any case... Uh, next is the forest, and this, oh, this level. Special shout out to Varanth from watching the, uh, the world record that was up when we started running this game. Varanth found this crazy shorter way to the boss level. Uh, this is the, probably the biggest difference between easy and then normal and hard. Uh, the boss location is different in easy mode than it is for normal and hard. Normal and hard is the same location. So we can talk a little bit about this level, because this one's a little technical. So you want to do a jump and fall down here. Now, this is a little bit of a speed strat here. You don't have to worry about it. You can just run through and take damage. But as soon as you are into this wall, don't hold right anymore. And you're going to want to hold Y and right. Right here. I think you could see Donald start to move just a little bit. So right here. I think you could saw him shift a little bit. Right when Donald is encased in this section is when I'm looking to hold Y and press right again. And what that does is it gives me enough momentum to jump over these vines and hit this caterpillar. It's a tight jump, but it's a tighter jump if you just try to start from the ground to get momentum. If you hold right when Donald's in that section of tree, and it's easy enough to look for, uh, you'll have an easier bit of time jumping past those vines to not take damage. So you're going to turn the world twice. One, two, and then you're going to do another little jump. Now this is maybe a, a second and a half time save that I came up with for this vine. Uh, but like I said, shout out to Varanth for finding the, the route to get, to get to the boss faster. This vine coming up right here is a little bit of a time save. Uh, so you're going to jump and you want to hit the vine, but you want to end up lined up with it, favoring the right side. And when you do that, the game is going to turn because you're standing on this and it's going to push you onto the right side of the vine. Now this vine is supposed to be impassable when it's straight up and down. So either when I'm standing on this platform or if I'm standing on this platform, it's straight up and down and you're not going to be able to get through it. The switch to open this vine is this stump right here that you have to find in the level. Now you can fall through it. If you have the angle of the world turned a little bit, you can just fall through it. Uh, but you can use this vine to position yourself on this side of the world instead of on this outside ledge. Uh, and that cuts off a little bit of time because then you get to turn the world over here and then do a jump and that takes you down to here. You jump I on this square like block there, just and like... follow the world. Now, if you're playing easy mode, right here you're going to do like... a jump down this corridor and you'll end up falling straight to the uh, the boss domain for this level. For normal and hard, and normal you're going to follow this around. Do a little bit of a jump there so you don't have to turn the world. Get momentum one way. Keep momentum, turn back, and jump over. 
I just jumped to the the boss Slightly fight. Slightly greedy jump. It's a little bit of a pain of a level, and you can really lose Gotta adjust time like if you that. miss that vi jump. Uh, but okay, anyway, this boss. Let's talk about this boss. The stage itself is kind of on a timer, I want to say. To where you're going to be moving to the left when you start the fight. And then after a certain while, Donald's going to be moving to the right again. And you can't... And someone correct me if I'm wrong on this. But you can't affect that. You can affect how quickly it turns. But that's just going to affect your position on the world when it does change directions. So when you first probably do this fight, you're going to be at the boss right here and then you're going to be going past him and then you're going to be coming back and then i don't really know how it turns after that but what you want to do is affect the speed of the rotation so that it changes while you're still at the boss and you can do that let me kind of show slightly green how jump. i handle that Right from the start of the fight, I'm sprinting left. That and then I'm going to wait for this like flower, and here, I hold right. So I'm sprinting to the left, and then I'm holding right after that flower. And what that does is it makes it so that the world comes back to the right, right there. So I'm still at the boss, and I'm able to do some more damage to him. Now, I got rid of the bees there. Dealing with the bees and this boss at the same time, it's a little bit of a pain. I believe it's three hits on this phase, two hits on the next phase, and two hits on the final phase. Uh, some people say that they only had to do one hit on the final phase, and that's something to do with the boss HP, and I'm not really sure how that's affected. We've only spent two weeks on this game, so it hasn't been super looked into. But what you want to do are, are the head dives to take to do damage to the boss. Ooh, with short man, little hops. This thing likes to take a left or a right really easily. Okay, two more hits, <clears throat> and the world hasn't really taken control to turn me away. And then right at the end, I do that big jump off the boss and turn the world as far as I can. And shout outs to Destroya for coming up with that. The quicker that you get the boss off screen, the sooner that his sprite flies off that way. And it just Apparently ends the fight quicker. You can save a tiny bit of time doing that. No, I mean, that was an okay fight. I took damage, I which you do want to avoid. All right. Oh, well, we fell in Pete 2, right? And now we come to was the focus loser, the flight level. And so, slight mess up in teleporters, right? You got to stay focused on this level. <laughs> and you cannot let go of a direction when you're in midair, when you're trying to land on some cloud, because you will... You will just fall. You'll fall. You're gonna fall. You're gonna fall anyway. I'm gonna tell you now you're gonna fall. But it's okay. You just... You gotta stay focused in this level. So yeah. Start of the level, you don't have to do too much. You just kind of ride the ship across. I mean, you can make it difficult on yourself and... Jump high on these clouds, but... You really don't want to, actually, if it's gonna create lag. And on some of these jumps, you can create lag if you're doing too big of a jump. And I apologize, because... Rewatching these PBs. I know I'm probably a little late compared to the music, and so I'm just singing a half step out. Oh my gosh, other Forget solar, me. shut up. No one wants to hear you right now. Alright, so after that lovely little first section of the level, then you get to the second half of the level. It's better music. Also a little scarier. Uh, but shout out to DL Darklink because he saved this run because I know I'd have done something right, stupid Lonk, otherwise. I'm my run to you. So, yeah, you can stand on these clouds. I guess it, that's hard to get. But there's a cloud right here. You can stand on that when there's not lightning going through it, I think. That's why I didn't take any damage there. But if there's lightning going through it, you will take damage. This cloud right here to this cloud is terrifying. And there's a couple ways you can handle it. If you jump too far, if I jump over here and come down, this cloud coming up uh, is going to damage me and I'll just fall to my death. And that's the end of the run. Uh, 
but you can do a, a, a little bit of a light jump, but you risk getting hit by that cloud. So there's two things that are a little safer that you can do. <clears throat> One is you can get a running jump, not quite yet. You want to take a little bit of time to let the cloud actually spawn. You can get a running jump and land on the cloud. <clears throat> and then there's some platforms over here that you can land on. If you land on the cloud, you'll damage it and it disappears. So that's one thing you can do. DL Darkling told us that you can just run off this cloud like I'm doing here and you'll land on this one. That's what I like to do. Well, that was the first time I ever did it. So I'm saying I, that's what I like to do. Like I'm gonna be doing that from now on. Uh, and then for the rest of this, it's pretty easy. You don't <clears throat> really have too much to worry about. I will say that this jump right here has claimed a couple runs. But even if you take damage, as long as you get through this level, that's a little bit of a sigh of relief. Now for the end of the level, oh, the scare. I think this one's a Mr. Freak specialty too. Right about... So right when this light comes back down, so it goes down, up, and when it's coming down, when the top of this light passes this center line again, you can run off to the right. And it might look scary, but it finishes the level a little quicker than if you were to just wait for the screen to scroll all the way down there. And then that's the end of all the password levels. So from here on out, you cost me. You, you got to finish the game. Long. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Nothing in this run is as. Or to say terrifying <laughs> as this level castle one <clears throat> i would say that this level is the make or break level there's a lot of places you can die uh, there's a lot of optimization you can go through and it wasn't perfect in this run um i definitely could set, have saved some time in this run but <laughs> darn it it's just when it, it goes well it looks pretty so basic rule of thumb you know you want to get a, a short jump off of him to land on here, this platform, and then jump again without losing speed. I messed that up. Uh, sorry I couldn't show that in this run. But you just go with momentum after this. Oh my gosh. You want to jump when you're under this peg. And what that'll do is you want to hold B, you'll get momentum to this block, block, short jump, and walk through that invisible layer here. That's the first half of the level. Now those jumps might seem scary, but when you get used to them and you practice them, they're not too bad. Uh, you just need to make sure that you jump, because those blocks, they might be about that wide, but like I showed in the mountain level, you have a little bit of wiggle room before Donald runs off. So you want to make sure that you're jumping on the edge of those blocks to reach the next block. But the second half of this first part, you're going to jump up and jump again so you keep momentum. Now, people have different ways to go through this part of the level. Uh, some people do big jumps, land on an enemy, and then do another big jump, and then finish this part. Me, I like to do, a sh I just like to stay on the floor the whole time, do a small jump into two big jumps, and then jump off the block to finish. It doesn't matter as long as you keep your momentum. As you can see in this, I messed it up. But short, big, and I... So I missed that jump off that block there, which was not intended. And panic ensues. <laughs> it was super terrifying. Uh, usually you die if that happens. If you kind of get thrown off of your normal pattern. Uh, I got lucky that it, the run didn't die right there. But if, if you practice some kind of path through there to where you don't lose momentum. And there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, you'll have a great time going through that level. At least that part of the level. Now the teleporters. Another good chunk of run ruiners if things start to go awry. So, most of the time you're going to take this path. Up to here. And then things start to change a little bit. So right here is the first one of a few momentum big jumps. So you don't have a lot of space here. If you run too far to the left, you're going to transfer to the other side of the screen. You don't want to do that. 
You want to have a momentum big jump up to this small block. And then you want to jump up to this green teleporter. Another momentum jump up to there. And then you'll jump on the purple that takes you to the left side purple one. This is where I think there's two schools of thought. And we can count this just to be sure. What I like to do is jump onto this black teleporter. Which takes me over here. Go to the green one. Up. And up. A little bit of the direction in there. And finish the level. So that's one jump two jump and then three jump four jump to that teleporter what you can do instead you can do a jump onto this block set up for a big jump and jump to the green teleporter and if you jump to that green teleporter You'll end up over here, and then you can jump to this ledge. You can screen transition and wrap around to the other ledge, and then jump up to the final teleporter. So that one's like one mini jump, big jump, jump, screen wrap, jump. There's an extra jump with that, I think. But as far as time... Uh, the difference is minimal. So either one of those ways would be they work perfectly fine. I just like starting from this purple and jumping to this black one because it doesn't involve risking falling down if you don't hit this properly. Like if you try to set up for momentum, because if you land on the left side of this block and try to jump over to the screen one, you're not going to make it. You're just going to end up either hitting this one or this one. If you land on this one, then you can just do this strat anyway. Uh, but if you try to get momentum and you walk too far to the right and you fall down, you're going to start to panic. And then you're going to start to hit teleporters that you're not used to hitting. You might end up lower on the level. And it's just kind of a nightmare. So you want to avoid that if you can. If you're confident with that jump, do that jump. If you just want to do a nice, easier kind of jump, you can just jump straight over to here. Come up to the green one. Jump. And actually make that jump. A bit of the direction in there. And then go to I mean, it was still the juggler. A teleporter, so we'll take it. All right. So the juggler has three different cycles, and we kind of call them a short, medium, or long cycle. And obviously, you hope for short cycles. That first round right there was a medium cycle. Uh, his short cycles are always denoted by him always slowly rolling on the ball so he's rolling slowly he's going fast now so i know that that's not going to be a short cycle it's either going to be a medium or a long cycle and the difference between the two is just time for how long he's going now what you're going to want to do is try to anticipate when he's going to become vulnerable in the state he's in right now he's not vulnerable uh but if you can anticipate it, you can damage him without taking damage and just keep the fight going. You run the risk, though, if you think it's a medium cycle and you try to jump in for damage and it's actually a long cycle, you're going to take damage and then you're just prolonging the fight. So we started with a medium cycle. There's another medium cycle. Give short cycle. There's a short cycle because it was slow the whole time. This one's going to be a medium or long. I took Aww. damage, which is a time waste. Took damage again, even though it was a medium cycle. That was just me being greedy, trying to time it. All right, short cycle. So we got two short cycles. There wasn't really any long green, cycles in there, so that was okay. When you take damage in this run, it's between 0.9 and 1 second time loss each time. So you really want to avoid taking damage best you can. Yeah, at least we got that RNG. All right, second to last level. Now this level, it's surprisingly easy to lose a lot of time here. Now, I know to stand on the right side of that block because you called yourself an idiot. I don't know how many times for, for not standing on it. What you're going to see me do here, and I'm sure there's better ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to not be jumping as much as I can. So I was standing on blocks that were either grabbed lower by the teeth or I was waiting for the fish to get off screen. 
uh, just so I could lower the amount of times I had to jump. There's a lot of lag you can generate in this level. And so we're either going to be doing that to where we avoid some jumps, or we're going to be using the magic hat to avoid damage and avoid some jumps. You're also going to see me try to kill these enemies as quick as possible so that I can further reduce any lag on the screen. Even falling off from one platform to the other can generate lag if there's a lot going on I on the screen. I don't know, I could... Kangaroo is not perfect, people. So there's some lag. Now I'm going to hat here. So I'm skipping... If I were standing here, I was going to have to jump over to this, and that was going to cause some lag. So I used the hat in between the second and third tooth here to avoid that. Even with the strat, you gotta actually perform it. Now, it was brought to my attention that uh, we're butt bouncing there. It's faster to butt bounce than it is to do the head dive to kill that enemy. It saves a little bit of a lag frame. That's about half the level done. You live to teach. <laughs> now, this isn't optimized completely. Saved it. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I haven't put too much Gotta effort adjust. into really memorizing where's the best places to jump here. All the lag is, all the lag is here. And then this is the final section. Fish, please. So a lot of that lag might have just been from jumping while the fish is jumping. I don't know. It's something we'd have to look into. But again, what I do is I count to the eighth block and I make sure I'm standing on the eighth block. That gives me enough time to hat, which I'm doing right now, and to not take damage from these teeth. Uh, if you're here, you're, this is where the game assumes you're supposed to be standing. And you're skipping at least one jump from here to here. Now you can make it to the boss door whether you're using your hat here or from your you're at this platform you can make it to the boss door without losing time uh, but it does save lag from an extra jump right here so i use the hat here to avoid that be mad for a second all right kanga what you got okay so kangaroo fight uh it's kind of a nightmare mr freak did an amazing job talking about this video and describing how to manipulate this kangaroo uh special kudos to him and i think des too he kind of talked about how he can manipulate it just from wiggling back and forth we didn't really understand what was going on i think mr freak really got into the meat and bones of it but right about here somewhere in this column there is a plane and when donald is on the left side of that plane the kangaroo is going to hop like this or he's going to do a wind-up punch. If Donald's on the right side of that plane, the kangaroo is either going to do quick punches or he's going to put his hands up in defense. What you want in a speed run are the wind-up punches because A, they're easy to react to, and B, you have a less chance of getting hit because if he's doing quick punches... You may think you're amazing at reaction times and you might be able to dodge one or two, but to do that for the whole fight, forget that. It's not happening. <laughs> uh, so what Mr. Free talks about in his video, and I won't talk too much about it, is if he's in this hop mode, you definitely don't want him to move because then it's going to throw off where that plane is that you're messing with. What you want to do is to jump in the air. If you're in the air, jumping past that plane to the right, He's going to put his hands up, and that'll stop him from bouncing. But while you're in the air, you want to land back outside to the left on this plane. And what that does is it then invokes him choosing his next move that's either going to be hopping again or a wind-up punch. And I don't really know what the probability is between the two for them to happen, but the fight's going to be better if you get more wind-up punches than him just hopping up and down. So let's see, see how this fight goes. So there's a wind-up punch. I see it. I'm reacting to it. I'm going to do a head bonk. Come back out. Try to fix it so he's winding up. And that was a really great fight. But that's kind of what you want to do. You want to, yeah, can't complain you want to bait that. him by jumping in and out of that plane. Making sure that you land 
outside of that plane. Because if you land on the inside, you might just get quick punch in the back of the head. And we'll see if we can throw up Mr. Freed's uh, kangaroo video for that, because that was a really good explanation of how all that works. You guys ready to see the biggest choke ever? At this point, I was kind of worried about the run. All right, so we're doing some more quick jumps off the pegs. That jump off the enemy there, shout outs to Dez Stroya, who's an insane psycho for coming up with that. But as long as you fast jump off this peg and hold B, uh, you'll get fast speed. You'll take damage off this guy, but you'll also attack him after the damage, and it'll send you to a peg that we actually want to be on. Uh, outside of this, if you don't want to do that and you just kind of get through this enemy normally, you want to start on this peg. Uh, if you start on this peg and you get a fast jump off this peg, it'll take you to the peg we're about to land on. So from this peg, including this peg, there's five pegs we're going to be jumping on. Uh, if you skip it with the strat that I'm doing here in this video, there's going to be four pegs that we're jumping on. So from this peg, it's peg, 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 peg. Kind of speed for releasing the B button. Uh, we're going to be landing on the next one, so it's going to be peg, 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 peg. Peg, 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 peg. And that should take you with fast speed over this section of enemies and pits and whatnot. There will be deaths here. It's a bottomless floor with only small platforms to land on if you miss, so good luck. <laughs> uh, now you come down this section. I don't really know what's faster if it's to wait on this ledge and hop through this guy. It's definitely slower to bonk on him twice to kill him. Uh, you can, like what I just did here, I took damage and ran through him. It's really up to you what you want to do. Uh, coming up is the final boss fight, and it's broken into two phases. Once you get through the first phase, your life, your HP is restored in the second phase. So I have four hits left right now. If I take one more hit, I would die with my current HP on the screen. Uh, I'm not too worried about that because you should be able to finish off Pete 1 relatively quickly. So um, it's okay to run through this guy and take damage as long as you didn't really, really take a lot of damage in the first part of the level. So we're going to come down here and what you're going to want to do is <clears throat> make a short hop onto this platform. Uh, you want to make sure it's a short hop because if you land too far and then try to do the trick we're about to do, you're not going to give yourself enough wiggle room to save the trick and you're probably just going to run off one of these platforms and die in the level and have to uh, do it over again. So I do a short hop and then at the very latest you want to hop where I did. If you are at this part or later you might still hit that enemy but you're going to land right here. Uh, it might be possible to react to that and still jump in time, but it's really, really difficult to do. And more often than not, and we've seen plenty of people, myself included, just run off this edge because we couldn't react to it in time. But you want to land on this platform and get a big jump to this peg, and only this peg, and getting a quick jump off of that takes you to this platform. Failing that, you're going to fall. Uh, the slower way is to go up and around to the left. You can do that if you're not comfortable with it, but this does save a lot of time, especially because of the fake wind that's in this level. So you want to kind of hit that peg, get a fast jump, and end up here. And this is Pete 1. So, shout outs to DL Dark Link for this quick strat. You want to head bonk, and honestly, no one's really sure what causes this. Uh... You're either going to kill Pete 1 in 5 or 6 hits if you do that. Not really sure why. Uh, we've watched, like, we've been able to see a boss's HP in the RAM. Uh, so most bosses' HP starts at 0, 1, and then when you do their first bit of damage to them, it gets set to some value. And then every subsequent hit knocks it down until it gets less than 0, equal to or less than 0, 4 in RAM. Donald's 
but normal attack does three damage, and his head dive attack, at least normal, does four damage. Sometimes you just end up doing three damage to Pete one, and we're not really sure why. But if you're able to get four hits, four damage per hit, uh, you'll beat him in five hits. Uh, a couple things to point out about this fight. Uh, that was a good fight. Some of it could have been a little faster if I didn't jump so high off of him each time. When you're running on the ground, you can get enough momentum speed to jump up and hit Pete and then hold B long enough to get you up to these platforms. If you do the fight quick enough like that, you'll not see any of his magic spells come out. And you want to really avoid that because his magic spells cause a lot of lag, both from, well, a lot of lag from them moving around. You can also get hit, and that'll take some time out of your, your uh, speed run. Uh, now, I went risky here. I wasn't really sure if I was going to get a 5-hit or 6-hit kill. But on the 5th hit, I decided not to hit B. Four, five. I decided not to hold B there, so I would just fall straight to the bottom. The purpose of that is because when you beat him on the fifth time, the game is going to wait for Donald to land before it does anything else. So as soon as Donald lands, Pete starts his unbeaten animation. And Donald can be in one of two places, ideally, for the speedrun. He's either going to be up on this block or he's going to be down on the ground. Now, when he's falling like that, unless there's some magic that hits the hat and keeps the hat from bouncing around, when he's falling like that, there's going to be some lag generated. So it's a slow fall. Uh, conversely, you can be on this platform, and then when Pete disappears, Donald will automatically walk off and fall down. And there won't be any lag with that. But it's a much further distance for Donald to fall, and the screen will not fade out until Donald is off the bottom of the screen. So I think think it's faster to just fall off even though there's a tiny bit of lag just so that when Pete disappears the floor disappears and Donald will fall to the bottom of the screen and the, the screen will fade out faster I think it's faster to do it this way than it is to like land up on this block and let the fight end that way uh, I don't really think anybody's timed it Fiver. all right so that's the end of that fight and then Pete too which surprisingly can cost a lot of time if you don't do it well. Which we've all had fights that we haven't done well with Pete 2. So the general rule of thumb here is you want to hit Pete 2 in the head. Uh, and there's a few ways you can do that. They're all just from jumping off his hands. Now, if you fall down to the, the floor down here, you're going to have to get back up onto his hands to do damage to him. And it can be a little tricky because his hands can do a few different things. Uh, if it's the spell that he casts with his hand waved up in the air, you're not going to be able to get up onto that hand. As they are right here, there is a way to get enough momentum and the perfect jump to make it up to that hand on either side. It's just really, really difficult. Um, but if you let this fight go on for a while, you're going to notice that when he bangs his hands into the side of the castle, these blocks start to fall. And that causes a lot of lag, and you're going to get hit, and it's going to take some time off your clock. So ideally, what you want to do is get momentum, but just do a tiny jump. And don't even hold B when you hit off of uh, Pete. Excuse me. Uh, you want to make sure you're doing the head dive attacks here. So let's just see how this fight kind of pans out. Tiny jump. So that was a little bit of a bigger jump, but we still hit him. Four, five. <clears throat> and so just on how quickly you do this fight, uh, his hand, his left hand, assuming you hit him every time, his left hand is going to be doing something different. So his left hand, no, sorry, it's probably going to be hitting the wall, but it's going to be in a different position is what I mean to say. Uh, so his hand wasn't there and I fell off. And Pete 2 takes 6 hits, so I know he has 1 hit left. If I were to hit the ground and jump up immediately, I wouldn't be able to make it onto his hand because he took damage and he's still... When he's in this damaged state, he doesn't move his arms at all. So I kind of wait just for a moment 
and then hop up onto his hand to get the sixth and final hit in. Uh, and it's something you're going to have to react to because this would be different if I didn't make that big jump over to here for one of those hits. I think it was the second hit. His hand might be in a different position. So you're just going to have to react to the fight as it goes on. So you get enough momentum, and then the final split time is whenever you make contact with his head. And yeah, this ended up being a 1628. At least for right now, it's the current world record. It was a great run, but a lot of good RNG happened in this run. Hopefully we can kind of bang out some good level by level videos of what some good strats to do. We might be able to use the task that scars is working on or videos that other people like Mr. Freed have worked on, but at least this should be a brief general overview of how you want to go about doing the speed run for this. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy watching it. Thank you for watching it. Uh, you can probably contact any of us that I mentioned, or if you see me up on speedrun.com, go ahead uh, hit me up on Discord or whatever if you have questions about the run. We'll point you in the right direction. But this is a it's really fun game. It's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.